and welcome to the morning blessing i am tessa marie how are you feeling today it is another beautiful sunny hot morning hello nancy you're off the first one here this morning hi colleen number two wonderful ladies how are you guys feeling today it's going to be a uh, hi marina you're early today it's going to be a nice hot day in toronto hello my nephew how are you doing what's the weather like in england um it's going to be 29 today oh that's amazing hi ryan good morning everybody's up did you guys see the topic did somebody whisper the topic in your ear because it is a hot topic i need feedback and how are all of you wonderful people feeling today seven o'clock let's get the show on the road ha, ha, ha. yes i know I took an expensive vitamin this morning. I'm not sure. I haven't had vitamins yet. Um, so good morning, wonderful and amazing human being. It's 8 a.m. Let's get the show on the road. It is the morning blessings coming to you from Toronto, Canada. Whoa! Hello, Kimberly. Morning. Welcome to the morning blessing. How are you feeling today? Good morning, Jules. Nancy said. And listen, like guys, the morning blessing, this one is a big one. I have pages that I was writing for a long time this morning. When doubt visits, and don't go there and say testimony, it's in my head. I'm talking. So when I say when doubt visits, doubt has energy and doubt has legs. So doubt comes through us, of course. We doubt ourselves. It comes through us. Doubt shows up. Doubt comes by the words of others. Hmm. That's a big one. And then doubt comes by the look of others. Hmm. So you listen to where it, how it comes. Doubt loves to visit. We all have doubt um, carriers in our life. We all have them. They come and they make it their career to be the doubtful person. Doubt carriers need no help from us. Doubt carriers will come no matter what. That is, is their job. They'll come. So let's come. Let's look at it. If the doubt carriers come to us because they have nothing else to do, we know they're going to come. And they will come with words. They will come with their looks. You cannot see their thoughts. But when you hear their words, you know where their thoughts were. Good morning, Loretta. How are you feeling? This hot morning. And then it comes through us, of course. So then we take it on and we go, okay, we're going to take this doubt, you know, because look at how, look at how so-and-so look at me. You know, I was just sitting here quite comfortable, I have a nice dress, I'm feeling good, yet they look at me. Oh, you have to wear makeup every day, why do you put makeup on? That is the doubt. You're beautiful just the way you are. That is to keep you without what you want to do. So that's, this is doubt. But we forget that doubt is going to come and they do not, hello, Deborah, welcome back. How are you feeling today? We forget that doubt will show up. Hi, Lonnie, Lana. Because it's, it's jo it is his job to show up. Doubt is in ourselves. We, we do it in our mind. We doubt our ability. We doubt our looks. We doubt what we are wearing. We doubt where we live. We doubt what we say. We doubt how we spell. And we doubt, we doubt, we doubt. And that is a, a tough load to carry. It's huge. It just weighs on you. Doubt comes by the look of others. They look at you, you doubt yourself. Doubt loves to visit. It has no other choice. It has to come. We all have doubt carriers in our lives. Dog carriers need no help from us. So what I'm aiming at, since they don't need help from us, what can we do? So stay with me on that. Because I want you to, sometimes you say I don't listen, but yes, you hear them, we hear them. Dog carriers will come to us no matter what. That is their job. That is their career choice. They chose to be a dog carrier. That's their career choice. And they would tell you, you know, I have been thinking and I look at you and all of that. Good morning. I'm feeling brighter today. How are you? I am absolutely fabulous. I am wonderful. I feel like I was talking to Colleen and I said, no, Colleen, I am so pleased with me. I'm so joyful. And she said, Dito, me too. So remember, that is their career choice. They are the ones who looks at something on the news and cast doubt on it right there. Right away, they see something on the news and they have to, they start there. So that their job is to cast the doubt on it right there and off they go in that direction. 
So we know that, and, and I have been there allowing them to affect me. I am not telling you what I haven't experienced. So I, we, we all know that. And I personally have been there, allowing them, the dog growers, to influence my behavior and my thought. They, they come and they influence our thoughts, our behaviors. These, they are um, dog growers. I call them farmers of doubt. All they do is plant the seed of doubt in our mind. In, in the, and it doesn't have to be very strong. It's things like, do you think you should have really done that? And you know you wanted to do that. I know it wasn't going to work. I could have told you. That is the daughters. That's how they come. So what did you expect? You know these people are not nice. Daughters. So you have to watch them or they'll come. Why are you doing this? I had them say, well, why do you have your grandson for 10 weeks in the summer from the age of four and a half? Well, guess what? No, daughters. He's 15. And I don't think he wants to spend time with Grammy anymore. He will spend time. But what am I going to pull out of 15-year-old's mouth? Hi, Rita. Good morning. Thought of you this morning. How are you feeling this morning? Um, yeah. So they, they will cast out on anything. Do you have to talk to your children every day? Do you have to do this? Do you have to be in your garden? Can't you? It's hard. Go inside. But then it's winter. I'm inside. So these are what they do. They, they have to do something about what we do. That is their job. They made it a career to doubt you. Oh, you want to do a podcast? Yeah, right. Go right ahead. You know how many people? Oh, wow, 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 wow. You guys know when I wrote my book, Controlling the Death Monster, my manager at the time, when he said, what are you doing? Because I'd be writing at lunchtime every minute I got by hand. And he said to me, do you know, I said, I'm writing a book on finance. Do you know how many financial books are out there? And I said to him, mine is going to be different. I didn't tell him I know. I said, mine is going to be different. And mine is different. Mine takes you through a journey. And it was insisted. I, I did it. I didn't wait for somebody to publish it for me. I published it myself. But if I had listened to this man who is supposed to be my manager above me, better than me, more educated in the field that I am in, because that's why he's a manager, right? But instead of saying, good for you, and say, why don't you write it about this? He had to cast doubt and put a shadow on it. And when he got a divorce and he had to separate things, he said to me, you know, I, I bought a copy of your book just because I realized it might be something I can learn. But at the time, if I had paid attention to his doubt, I wouldn't have written the book, would I? I wouldn't have written the book and he maybe would not, would have missed out on something or somebody else would have missed out on something. And that is what we must remember. The doubt people, when they come to, to, to spread their doubt, they believe in themselves and they make us doubt ourselves. They take our belief and they walk on it. And the doubters, those people that doubt your ability to even breathe, they'll tell you, oh, it's too hard, go inside, you shouldn't breathe. But no, I can breathe for now, let me go breathe. The, doubt, the doubters will tell you, don't do this, you did it yesterday. And you have to remember that the reason why they, they're pushing you because they cannot do it. The doubters cannot do it themselves. So they need to go around and find a way to make you be like them. I always say they're sitting on the stoop and they fold their dresses or they fold their leg at their knee and fold their dresses between their legs and they sit on the stoop and they're saying that and they're just gossiping. And they have made, and if you, if you can sit next to them, oh, mission accomplished. I have one recruit. When I die, this is going to be my follower to continue sitting on the stoop endlessly. No aim, no purpose. It's an effort to go eat. It's an effort to prepare a meal. So what do the daughters do? They eat crap. And if you join them, you will eat crap too. They'll never think of making a, going in the kitchen and making a healthy salad. No, 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 no. I could sit out there and cast doubts on everything. But the salad, I, I, I'm just going, my money is not enough. I can't buy vegetables, but I can buy a, a, a prepared meal that has names that they cannot pronounce. Things that are created in a lab. And they eat it. Daughters do that. And they want you next to them. They need company. So, so why do, so, so, so we know that, right? We know it's their current choice. So we know that, and we know that they will keep coming at us. 
Why do we add or cast doubt on ourselves? Why are we helping them? Why are we increasing the shadow of doubt in, on our own selves? You heard that? We know doubters exist. We know each and every one of us right now, each and every one of you have faced a doubter. Why do you marry this man? Why do you choose to live this marriage? Why do you choose to do that? And sometimes doubters are so close to us that if we don't look at it, we trip right into them, break our neck, and because the doubter is blocking our view. So we know that. So why do we add it? Why do we add to it by we doubting ourselves? Oh, Tessa Marie, I want to be a millionaire, but yeah, you know. No. No, there is no, oh, Tessa Marie, I want, this is going to be what it is. You will never hear me say to you, you cannot do it. You will never, ever may help hear me doubt your ability to do things that you desire to do. No way. I will push you forward and tell you, go right ahead, do it. You've got this. And of course, I would also say to you, you have to keep doing it. And I'm also going to say to you, the doubters are like flies. They're going to be buzzing around you like a crazy fly. And no matter what you do, you can't find a swatter big enough to eat that tiny thing or small enough to catch it. These are the doubters because sometimes... Their little doubt is a little easy one. You know, they just start to sow a seed and then they grow on it. You see, remember what I told you about this person? Well, that was two weeks ago, but now they're dragging it now and tell you, well, you should see what's going on. The doubters are telling you. They, they plant the seeds. They hate the person. They want you to feel like that. So why do we add or cast doubts on ourselves? Why? If we know they're going to come and do it for us, why are we helping them? Because when we cast those, we're helping them. We're growing it. We're feeding it. We're fertilizing it. We're giving it sunlight and air. Why are we increasing the shadow? Why are we making the shadow of doubt bigger in our life? Why? We already know. So we are looking for validation from others. That's one of them. When we do that, we are looking to want somebody to, we, we believe if they say we are okay, we are good. And when they say we are not okay of what we are doing, thinking or whatever, then we want to change it so we can be okay with the rest of the world. We trust their loud mouths. We, we, do, we trust their big loud mouth more than we trust our own selves. We believe in them. Some of us make decisions based on what a big loud mouth person says. And we make those choices because, again, we trust their loud mouths. We give them permission to continue when we listen. We, all of us, we, I have been there. When I speak with you, I have been there. It's not something I picked out of the ethers. It's an experience I have. We give them permission to continue. Why do we give them permission to continue? You know why? Because we are afraid of what the bully will think of us. We are afraid of them. That's why we give them con con permission to continue to doubt, make us doubt our very existence. We are afraid of what the bully would think of us. Do we know why? Do you know why that matters to us? We, at the time, we do not know why. Because we, are, we were not groomed to believe in ourselves. That's why. And I didn't say raise, I said groom. To believe in yourself, you have to be groomed. You have to, you, you have to believe in yourself. It's like waking up every morning and having a shower and getting ready and dressing. To believe in yourself is having two, three meals a day. You must eat to survive. So we weren't groomed. Nobody groom us to believe you are the best. You are absolutely amazing. You know, the teachers, those teachers, they can swallow you up because their job is to tell you why you're not good enough, why you're not smart enough. And then the gossipers just spread the shit all over the place. And they take it and they have no idea, but they just use that tongue of theirs. And each time they do that, they're perpetuating their stupid life in a mess. But they do not believe that. They believe that they have to keep us back by telling us what is wrong with us. And all of that happens because along the way, we did not hear somebody say, good for you. Choose. Make a choice. 
Why? Grooming, it take requires work. And where does it start at home? And you have to groom because before they get to school, there's somebody who's going to ungroom them for you. They're going to tell them you talk too much, get that, sit down, go in the corner, no, you can't. They get so you get so many no's in, in, in elementary school that by the time you get to high school, you think no is the only way to go. So you avoid no. And then you find yourself taking yes. So you accepting the daughters, the bullies in high school. The people that want to do whatever they want and you cannot say no. Because you know saying no is not if the daughters get stronger, but you have to have antidotes. You need vitamins. You need an, a vaccine for those type of behavior. Because we were not groomed to believe in ourselves. That's why we allowed those daughters to grow in our head. We were taught to trust and believe that they, they the daughters out there, is better equipped to tell us how to be ourselves. <sighs> the teacher is better equipped to tell you how you should be. I love those teachers that look at a black student and tell them, hey, you, you should be a dancer. You should be a singer. You should play basketball. You're so good at it. You should play this, that, or that, baseball. Hey, what about if that person can be a scientist? Knowing that, I groom those three to stand up for yourself. Learn to say no when you mean no. Because it's not, it's not every black little girl that needs to be Debbie Allen. That was her journey. And it's not because we, this girl is black, she, can, she has to jump up and down like this. That is not right. So the daughters begin at school. Oh, you know, I'm looking at this and you should do that. I told you guys I had a coach that showed up at my house to convince myself and my husband that Michael should continue taking, doing, what do you call it, basketball? And the boy has already told us, hey, I cannot, I will not put the effort that is necessary in becoming this person. I do not want to. And when they showed up, but he can get a scholar. I don't know what they can. And I had to tell the teacher, listen to me. I sent him to get an education. And if along the way he chooses that and he wants it, I'll stand behind him. But I, I only want an education. I literally told them, you are not educated. Those people are. Go get that diploma and bring it for me. To this day, those grade 12 diplomas are hanging on those walls. They don't belong to them, those grade 13 diplomas. They don't, they don't own it and they know that. Because that is as far as I could take them. The rest is up to them. So when the daughters... Tell them, you cannot be a scientist, you cannot be a doctor, you cannot be an actuary, you have to end up being a dancer because you're a black girl and a rapper and a basketball player. And they will do that to others, you know? Oh, your father was a millwright, maybe you should be a millwright. Why? Or be a mechanic, why? White or black, the teacher. So the daughters take that little root away from them. And they just put them on the side. They don't tell them that a boy, that a girl, or you'll be okay. They're not sick. Why are they going to be okay? Give people a chance. Teachers are the biggest daughters, and we have to prepare our children to go to school and to realize these people are daughters. You have to obey. You have to follow the rule. You have to don't like them. You study hard to get out of their classroom so you do not repeat it. But they cannot choose for you. So the daughters come. And as I said, doctors are the people the closest to you. Oh, when you do something, because I don't believe in trying, when you do something and it didn't go according to how it went, they'll tell you, oh, I know, I could have told you. you know, I, 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 we all thought it was going to be a failure. Do I need you in my life? No, I don't. You and the we and your thoughts, go bury them in a cemetery. That's where they belong. And we need to know that. Because we were not groomed to believe in ourselves. We were taught to trust and believe that they, they the daughters, they the teachers, they, they're better equipped to tell us how to be ourselves. Really? They cannot even be themselves, but they want to tell you, a child, a five, six, how to be you. So we found our voice. And when you find your voice, hey, you're ruffling feathers. Birds will be walk. Daughters will be walking. Here you are, Yuko. Good morning. Birds will be walking around with no feathers. 
That's what happens. You will be sh they will be shedding their feathers, those doubters, because you know what? You took it from them. You turn around and you said, I have my voice. I found my voice. Don't talk to me like this. Don't tell me I'm not good enough. I know who I am. The doubters will tell you, you are too short. You don't speak English properly. You cannot read well. You cannot spell. Hey! But you got your voice. We found our voice. Our, our thoughts never liked it. But our voice was silence. Be a good girl. Boys, boys don't cry. Suck it up. You know, we, we, you have to be a good girl. A good girl sits her knees together and she sits there and she takes abuses from the school home maybe and then it goes into a marriage and it goes into a, a, a career choice and it goes into this and your daughters, all of those seeds. Oh, well, you know, I remember my teacher told me I wasn't good enough in math. Really? How does she know you weren't good enough in math? If she didn't treat you uh, or train you or teach you well maybe she doesn't know how to transfer the material from herself to you so what I am saying to every hi Ryan thank you this is lovely what I'm saying is that we found our voice so guess what we have a vaccine against them we have a vaccine against doubt and the source of doubt in the form of the affirmations you and I create. You see, when they sow the seeds of doubt with us, in us, and it has been going on because they, they keep telling me I'm too old. They keep telling me that. They tell me that all the time. Why don't you relax? Can you imagine me relaxing? I would fall over. I don't know how to relax. To, when I do relax, but what I'm talking about is Oh, you're retired, Tessa Marie. Sit down and relax and do what? Have you sat down long enough to realize everything hurts when you try to get up? So that tells you, you are not. This morning at six, at, at 20 past six, I went for half an hour walk. Because I know at, at 30 degrees later, it will not be fun. I didn't walk slow. I walked and I pushed myself to the point I got back here, jumped in the shower, da, 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 and here I am. The doctor told me, do not wake up so early. You need sleep. How do you know what I need? The doctor is filling my head with that nonsense. I don't need more sleep because I set an alarm for 4.15 and, and my body says, okay, time, time to get up. It's 3.30. Some days it's quarter to four. And I get up. And the doctor would tell me, lie in bed. It's a holiday. Stay in bed. The doctor will tell you, oh, lie down. For the, don't lie down. If you need a rest in the afternoon, take it. But don't let the doctor tell you to stay there. You see, yeah. And, <laughs> and those of you who don't know, well-behaved women do not make history. Men that conform do not make history. So do not let anybody tell you that you have to sit and relax and take it easy. Because... You want to do it, you do it. Like Juliana said, it took me a long time to find my voice. Oh, some of us never do, Juliana. Join um, Nancy, join the club. We forget that we have a voice. But to get our voice back, we have to create vaccines against doubt in the form of the affirmations we need to create. I'm going to give you a few. Take them. And you do not have to be in the person doubting you at the moment to recite them. But guess what? We can kill the old tree, the tree in the old life. Remember now we are new people. We are younger now. We found our voice. We are no longer old like over there when we were taking everybody's nonsense. Nancy just said that it took a time for her to find her voice. But her voice she found and when she found that voice she became a free woman believing in her ability to do whatever she desires to do to live a fulfilled life and is your fulfilled life sitting on the ground in the garden and playing with mud that's mine and create a, a, a requested vaccine of the of all the nearly done, oh yeah, what, is that what you call it? Nearly dumbness that went to see not to not that want to see not do well. Yeah, 
They don't want you to do well because you're showing them what they know they cannot do. You know, I, I cannot, I, I, I couldn't have my grandson for 10 weeks, Tessa Marie. Until, and, until, he, until COVID came and took the last three years away from us. I couldn't do that. Tessa. No, you can, but it's okay for me to do that because I can. I just prove to you that I can. So why year after year when you see the child, I had to look at my grandson and say, you know, that woman, she's crazy. You know that, right? He said, you told me that last year, Grammy. I think she's crazy. She tells you the same thing over and over. Why do you have your grandson every summer? I wanted to say something rude, but my grandson was there. And you know, I have the hottest, sauciest, most vulgar tongue that will use the word, not vulgar words, but the words that will make them spin on their toes. But, and the child knew that. Yes, they're the Debbie Downers, and they want to make keep us dumb. They don't want us to win. So let us look at a couple of vaccinations I got. I love me and I love where I am right now in the moment. Can you? S so when that thing, when we were older, because we're all teenagers now, um, we look at it, you know what? And it, it comes, the teacher, the ex-husband, the children that were stupid enough to say things they cannot take back. The people that come in your life, the sisters, the brothers, the nephews, the people that say things to you that hurt you. And you, you feel it in the moment. A stepmother, a stepfather, somebody that said something to you, you'll never amount to anything. you just like, I love me and I love where I am. I love me and I love where I am. Put passion into it. Put love into it. Stroll into it like you have the most sensuous dress on you. And you're feeling the vibration of the earth as it is going through your body. And you man shoulders back. Show the six pack and say, mm -hmm. I am good. I am whatever it is. So you say, I love me. And I love where I am. Do not say it like that. Stamp your feet on the ground. As I said, if you are not bold enough to do it loudly, hide in a cupboard, close the bathroom door, turn on the shower, and do it in there. Eventually, you will come out of the tub and you'll stand in the bathroom and you'll do it. And the next time, you'll be on the hallway going to your bedroom. And you'll start doing it on the sidewalk. And you'll be walking and you'll say, I love who I am. I love me. And I love where I am right now. And I'm not done. I love my gifts and talents. We all have gifts and talents. Do you know what they are? The ability to, to, to go through what you have gone, done to come here. Patience, understanding, peace, respect, kindness, compassion, empathy. These are gifts and talents. They are expensive and you got them. So you have to love them. And I'm not talking of your ability to be a hairdresser, to be a podcaster, to be the best gardener in the world, to, to, to be the best grandmother in the world, to be the best daughter in the world. No. Wife. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about other gifts and talents. Your ability to survive. I am my best when I seek joy. You don't know what joy is? And what you're seeking it. I can feel the joy coursing through my veins. We have to do that. I love how I feel when I accomplish a task. I love when I, how I feel when dinner is ready at five and nobody's ready to eat until six. I have an hour to relax and pour a glass of sherry, wine, whatever, whatever. Put a cup of tea, a cup of coffee with creamy sweetness in it. That's joy. That's what, you, that's what you're feeling. Today, I feel amazing. That is what you do with the daughter. Oh, you're not looking too good today. No, you know what? I feel amazing. What do you mean you feel amazing? Right away, your voice goes high and... Okay, chill. Because I do feel amazing. In this moment, I feel happy. I am brilliant. My mind is clear. And it's, it's affirmations that is killing doubt. I love being the bold me. Wow. Wow, Arita. I love being the marina calling. I love being bold. I love feeling good. You have a car, you're driving shoulders back, a hand or ten and two, and you're driving and you're singing, and this girl is on fire. <laughs> and because she's on fire, 
You know, you just make sure your wife drives the best car that money could buy according to your budget, and there you go. And you walk with a purpose and say, I did it. There was a smile across her face when she saw her birthday gift for her car. That's what matters, not the daughters. I feel amazing since I have been doing this. What did you do lately that made you feel amazing? There is something you did that made you feel amazing. Hello, Peter. When the daughters come calling, you need to have a vaccine. How are you feeling today, Peter? We are talking to about the daughters. And sometimes we help the daughters by doubting ourselves, doubting our abilities. And as I said, our first big daughter, if it's not our parent, is the teachers at school that tell you you cannot do this. Where I am is perfect for me in the moment. That's a vaccination against the person that tells you where you are or what you're doing is not good enough, is not good for you. And you know what? I never ask you to criticize others when I speak with you because I go against that for me. I want you to look at that person and that tells you when you say where I am is perfect for me. And they say, what do you mean? But you do not have. You mean, they point to you what you don't have. They are so blinded by what you have that they cannot see it. It's so bright. I have health. I found my voice. I'm emotionally stable. I'm mentally equipped. I'm physically fit. I am spiritually ready to accept my life. I'm financially fortified. I don't know. Think about what people help me. So there you go. The minute you do that, all of that blinds them. So they have to dig through the garbage to make sure they can find what it is in you that is not too good. So they can point out, like Theodore Roosevelt said, they can point out where the strong man stumble. Their job is to point out where you fail. But you didn't fail because you did it. You have a lesson. You know what not to do. And you know what to do to succeed. And they don't know that. They can only see the cover. They are not opening that book called you. Because if they, they will not understand the language. They will not be able to spell the words. They cannot pronounce the words that create you, the words that make you you. They will not understand the language you speak. So I have complete control of me and where I go in the thoughts, in my thoughts, words, and action. Affirmation to combat the doubters. When they said, you know, this is not, no, I have complete control of me and where I go, in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I control that. Nobody else can control that for you. I am here because this is where I am. And I am at my best. That's where I am. That's where, that's where I am. Here, right here. And I'm at my best. So, I, I, I want you guys to remember the beginning though. I know we are gone over already. So, those of you who want to hang on, remember the beginning? I said, why do we add or cast doubt on ourselves? Why are we helping them? Why are we increasing the shadow of doubt on ourselves? Why? And I told you why. We were taught to look for validation outside of ourselves. We, we trust their loud mouths more than we trust ourselves. We give them permission to continue to be absurd and disgusting to us. Why do we give them permission to continue? Why? Because we are afraid of what the bully will think of us. That's why we do not say, get away from me and stop. Move. Clear my path. You are blocking my view of my future. Get out of my head. You, the phone, the, you do not have to answer the call right away. You do not have to take the DM. You can sit and say, you know what? I didn't hear that. I didn't hear the phone. I didn't see the DM. Yes, you can. Why do we, we are afraid of what they'll do. We know what, 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 why that matters. You know why that matters? Because we, nobody said, hey, Peter B, groom yourself. You can do this. Happy, happy somebody. Hello. Because we were not groomed to believe in ourselves. That's why we let the daughters sow their seeds. 
We have they we 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 were taught to trust and believe that they they the daughters that they're better equipped to tell us who we are meant to be. That's why we allow it. All of those little reasons. But then we find our voice. Nancy said she found her voice. You know, Nancy said that. And our thoughts never liked it. But our voice was silenced. Be a good girl. Be a, a strong boy. Don't, don't be a sucky sucky. No, guess what? Guess what? We have a vaccine now. Affirmation. Against doubt. In the form of the affirmations you can create. I love me. I love where I am. I love my gifts and talents. I am my best when I, I seek joy. I love how I feel when I accomplish a task. Today, I feel amazing. In this moment, I feel happy. I am brilliant. I love being the bold me. I feel amazing since I have been doing this. Yeah. Where am I? Where? I am in a perfect place for me. I have complete control of me. And where I go in thoughts, words, and action. And guess what? I am here. Because this is where I am supposed to be. And I am at my best when I'm there. Hello, wonderful people. How was that? Thursday Positive Vibes, Beautiful Humans. Thank you, Marina. Um, Marina is living. Have a great day, Marina. And I love the thing about... Say Sonora to well behave old fashioned Japanese ladies will include that. It took me a long time to find my voice. And Ryan is telling us to have a productive day. Happy Wednesday. So we had a wonderful time with this and all the wonderful people who came. So let's say thank you. Thank you, Nancy, for holding on. Rita, of course, you know I had to push you. Yuko, thank you for joining us. And Marina and all your wonderful words of wisdom. Colleen, thank you for coming and ryan and of course deborah loretta Lundy, wonderful people so let's tell the doubters to give us a break and we can if they don't want to give us a break we can give them a break because we can just when they call oh well you know i'm calling to tell you how my life is a mess you go yeah well you would you like to get a vitamin for the day i have one for you oh i'm calling to tell you i survived the surgery <laughs> Isn't that better than telling you, oh, I'm coming to tell you my life is improving. Try that. You know what they'll do. <laughs> they won't call you back. <laughs> they will leave you on your own. So have a wonderful day. I love each and every one of you. I appreciate your presence here today. And thank you so much for being the amazing you and choosing to press the button to hear me spill all these things. And sometimes it's deeper than others, and sometimes it's quite loose, and maybe sometimes I am not lucid enough. But guess what? I love doing it. Have a great day. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye, everybody.